What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I have another amazing knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. This is the Koenig Arius and uh, I am uh, very very pleased to finally have one of these on my channel. I honestly was not sure if I would ever get a chance but thanks to once again my buddy Jeff Goodnow who has provided almost all the knives for um, my content this week. Uh, I have the opportunity to handle this. I have a lot to say about it. Ricky, I know you're watching. I know you're excited. <laughs> My buddy Ricky has been like drooling over the Koenig areas for so long. And when uh, when he found out that I had an opportunity to review one or he saw the pictures of Jeff's collection, he said, please tell me you're going to review that areas." And I said, yes, I'm going to I'm going to review that. Jeff is Jeff's a nice guy, a knife guy. Jeff is a nice knife guy, and he's uh, going to allow me to review it. So thanks again, Jeff. Anyways, let's go ahead and get some measurements here on this guy real quick. Overall length of the Koenig Arius, we're looking at eight and a half inches exactly. How about tip to scale? We're looking at about 3.5 inches on the blade, maybe a little longer in areas, maybe up here. Uh, actual cutting edge, you're looking at probably about 3.3 inches overall. How about some size comparisons? Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1, Rat 1 coming in at 8.6 inches overall. So you can see there we're almost exactly the same in length when compared to the Rat 1. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. Just a little bit longer than the PM2. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches overall. Once again, the Ritter Hogue being in some areas, similar in profile, especially the, the blade silhouette. Not, not all of the lines in the blade, but if you look at these two blades, they're very, very similar. The Koenig's got a little bit longer blade, but it's the same idea in shape. The handle is also longer in a different shape, but uh, I think that's a good uh, comparison there. How about up against the uh, Spyderco Delica? Spyderco Delica coming in at seven inches overall. Let's give you guys an example of the action on this thing. Now, I am not anywhere near the first person to review a Koenig Arius. It's been a while since these things blasted into the knife world, commanding that we all pay attention, and we did, and we liked them. I know what people say about the Arius. I know the history. <laughs> uh, this knife is very popular, and for very good reason. We're going to go into that, but... For those of you few who are watching my channel and who don't know anything about this knife, um, here is an example of the action. It is absolutely 100% frictionless and fall shut. It does not need my help at all to drop. No double clutch, meaning the blade gets past the detent ball by itself and it is perfectly, perfectly buttery smooth. That, in combination with a lot of other things, is what makes this knife so popular. Let's go ahead and get a weight on this guy. Now, this particular one has a carbon fiber front, a beautiful carbon fiber front, which we're going to talk about, and then it's got a milled out titanium uh, frame lock. You can see it's very heavily milled, and carbon fiber is, uh, you know, as you guys know, very light. The carbon fiber, if you guys can see in there, has also been milled. Okay, the standard version of this is milled titanium on both sides. So the standard version I know weighs like 4.8 ounces or five ounces. This version of the knife weighs 4.09 ounces, very light. Honestly, and it's because of how big it is and, and the contouring, it honestly feels even lighter than that. I, if the scale had said three and a quarter, I wouldn't have been surprised. But you're looking at just over four ounces, which is just amazing for the amount of knife and blade that you get. So this is a carbon fiber variant, but keep in mind, you know, the standard versions weigh a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, more there. So anyways, uh, this is a flipper knife running on bearings. You can see here we have a nice matte sort of cloudy day finish. I really like that. It is not the only finish that is available on these knives. These knives, from what I'm aware, it's, it's not exactly the same thing that Olamic's doing, but they do have a ton of different options. I don't know what all options are standard and available for everybody who wants to order a knife directly from them or what you can expect to see at retailers, but I have seen 
Flipper variants and non-flipper variants. I've seen variants with choils. I've seen titanium. I've seen anodized hardware. I've seen textured titanium. I've seen carbon fiber. I've seen black carbon fiber. This is a red carbon fiber variant. I've seen a lot of different stuff. Uh, different variants of back, I mean, in terms of anodization and materials, I've seen different variants there. So I imagine there are a lot of different options with this knife, but not everything is gonna be available all the time. Uh, so just keep that in mind. As far as the one that uh, Jeff provided me with here today, we're looking at a cloudy day finish, or as I call a cloudy day finish, on uh, an M390 blade. I don't know if, it doesn't say anywhere. Koenig does a really good job of just, this is what they put on the blade, Koenig. In a nice little place, very classy, and nothing else on the blade. It just looks great. Oh, hats off to you guys. That is awesome. You have this very similar blade shape or overall profile to the Ritter Hogue, except that you have much more detail in the Koenig. This nice cutout here for your finger, a nice groove or fuller that uh, sort of extends into the cutout, a flat that carries out about 75%, 80% the length of the blade, maintaining some decent thickness out to the tip. You can see there the swedge that sort of, you know, uh, is coupled with this flat here and goes way out here to the tip. Uh, the actual blade thickness on this guy, it's hard to tell because the swedge or this, this taper actually goes back into the handle, but I'm going to guess it's about the same as the PM2, possibly a little bit thicker. Between 145 and 155 thousandths is probably what we're looking at there. Really, really beautiful blade and screaming sharp screaming sharp. This thing is razor sharp. Multiple times I have almost cut myself. If it's one downside to this knife and how smooth it is, it's that you really have to be paying attention. And that's not a bad thing, yeah, but because, you know, the flipper tab, basically if I cut myself, it's in user error. The flipper tab is in the right place to disengage it and then it'll fall. So get your fingers out of the way because it's not going to, it's not going to wait for you. Accidental friction is not going to um, occur in this knife and it's not gonna stop the blade from falling down on your fingers. It will fall, but I would rather it have that action because, you know, I, that, that, like I said, I don't wanna give you guys the impression that's a negative thing. You know, that, uh, that thumb stud is in the right place, but it will fall down. So um, anyways, though, the, uh, the blade or the thinness behind the edge is just incredible. It is very, very thin behind the edge and just screaming sharp. Very, very cool. Um, you have a very generous, um, it's not a finger choil, but a, I literally almost cut myself right there. Um, it's a sharpening choil there, so that's really, really nice. Moving down to the carbon fiber scales, this is just incredible. Not only are they red laced carbon fiber that have been nicely, just ever so slightly contoured and nicely chamfered all the way around, but there's actually milling in the carbon fiber that just, it adds to the three-dimensional look and those red lines sort of pop and move around, the light dances around that texturing. That is stunning. I didn't notice that at first when I unboxed and I got to look at it and I was like, wow, look at the texturing on that. That's beautiful. So cool. Love the D-shaped um, sort of bold, polished front side pivot. That's really, really nice to look at and it's unique. It's really uh, something that we don't see and it sort of fits the whole appearance and personality of the knife. Really, really great. Got a nice big two finger position choil here. You don't see that very often, but it creates an incredible ergonomic feeling. Honestly, for a knife that does not have a forward choil, and I'm not gonna judge it on, because like I said, uh, you know, you guys know I like forward choils. This one doesn't have it, but there are variants out there that do. For a knife that doesn't have a forward choil, this is one of the best ergonomic experiences that I've ever felt. This, it's, it's that good. It's just really, really good. Moving down here to the uh, Pivot hardware, you do have, as far as I know, one size up from the little tiny size that I don't like, so thank you very much, Koenig, for doing that. You have a backspacer that doubles as a lanyard tube or a lanyard slot, that's great. A little bit of meaningful texturing back there on the, um, on the uh, backspacer, really nice. The backspacer is pretty minimal, leaving most of the knife open, but you still have that feeling of security. I'm not able to actually squeeze the uh, carbon fiber and titanium together. There's no flex in there. Moving to the other side, it's much the same as the front, except that instead of carbon fiber, you have nicely machined titanium. See the pattern here? How beautiful is that? That's awesome. It's simple, but it's very effective. It just, this whole knife has this like very 
futuristic, elegant look to it. You know what it looks like to me? This is essentially the knife equivalent of a Ferrari. This is That's what it makes me think of. I mean, it is so precision made. It's so like, I mean, everything is obviously in place for, for not only for visual purposes, but for functional purposes as well. Excuse me, I'm gonna put my phone on airplane mode real quick so that we do not have an issue during the middle of the video. But anyways, everything about this knife, it's just so, per they've managed to like, you know, make the ergonomics uh, functional and utilitarian. And they've, they've been able to match it with a, a um, in my opinion, an aesthetic of beauty, which is why I say that it reminds me of a Ferrari because it's it's so, uh, you know, it, it's made in a, in a way, it's, it's all performance oriented. You know, all the lines are beautiful, but they're there for a reason. All of the little scoops and all of the little aerodynamic lines in, in uh, you know, a really high-end Ferrari, they're, they're all there for a very specific purpose. And I would imagine from an engineering standpoint or a design standpoint, that'd be really difficult. You know, um, a lot of things that are designed purely for function, you know, they end up being incredibly functional, but they also end up ugly. You know, um, that's, that's oftentimes the product of that. I would imagine it's because it's just very, very difficult to do. So I understand that appearance is subjective, but, um, in my opinion, this knife is very, very easy on the eyes, definitely. So moving back over to the other side, you do, of course, have um, your adjustment side polish pivot. Very simple, very elegant looking. Looks really, really nice. I love this simple polished hardware. Um, you do, of course, have a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop. You have a very functional and very simple pocket clip. There's no divot, but it doesn't stick up very high. You have a slot right here that's meant for your finger to latch onto or the meat of your finger when you're pulling the knife out of this pocket. You can see the meat of my finger sinks into that slot. It's easy to pull. As far as what sticks out of your pocket, it's just that much. Not deep carry, but it's not a shallow carry either. It's just perfect. Very easy to pull in and out of your pocket. The knife has a nice medium heavy detent. You can definitely feel it break and it will fire. You cannot fail this knife. It's simply not an option. It doesn't matter how light I flip this, it will flip. I'm actually holding onto the knife, trying to just go just a little bit at a time, and no matter what, the only way you're gonna do it is if you put too much pressure on that lock bar. But if your fingers are off of it, it's going to deploy. Even straight up with my thumb, it's going to deploy. It's that good. Um, you can actually see the detent click into place just in a magical way. Ugh, that's just perfect. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure you guys are laughing like, what What are we supposed to gain from that? You know, he does that on every video. Like, I know, it's I can feel it and you guys can't. I can feel the rest of the frame reacting to that detent pull. Oh, it's just so, it's so good. I mean, you gotta feel it to believe it, but it's just awesome, you know? And speaking of deployment, so this line down here, I, I tried forever to do it this way and I, I just couldn't do it, but I realized it's probably because it's more set up to be convenient for people using the reverse flick. Since that finger ten tends to sit a little bit lower than your thumb, it's definitely, definitely geared towards people wanting to do that reverse flick because it's unbelievably easy. The only knife that's as easy to, re to flick with a reverse finger is a Spyderco. And honestly, this, is, this feels good. I mean, it's easy to do, but honestly, the Koenig is easier to do it on. Um, Ricky, I know that's what you were dying to know. Is this easy to rever uh, do a reverse flick on? Yes. This is incredibly fidgety. You have the flipper tab that's in the right spot, whether you want to do the light switch or you wanted to do you know, kind of the push button method. Um, meaningful jimping up there, good relationship with the pivot, large heavy blade that's not overly cumbersome, but it creates for an excellent flipping action when it's combined with that incredible detent. You have a nice landing zone for your finger right here, so that's not going to be uncomfortable. You have easy engagement with the lock bar, easy to push out of the way, no double clutch. So if you're talking about, in terms of fidget factor, for those of us who like to sit around and fidget with this knife on the couch, yeah, it gets an A+, 100%. How about from a utilitarian standpoint, from somebody wanting to buy this knife and use it as a tool? Yes, A+, as well. It's perfect, it's so easy to manipulate. It's just, this knife is so good all the way around. It's almost, it's just, it's crazy. The, the only thing that I wish was different is that I wish there were some jimping up here because I would use this not, I mean, I don't know. This, this is just, it's so elegant and beautiful and perfect, but it's also clearly meant to be used. 
They want you to use this. This is very, very friendly as far as a tool goes. So I want there to be jimping up there. Does it need to be up there? No, because the lines and the curvature of the handles and the contouring and everything, there's not a lot of texturing on there, but it's enough to lock you in. There is a little bit of texturing down here on the lock bar, and I do feel really secure with this knife in hand. I would just like some jimping up there, so if I wanted to bear down on it, I could. I think this knife will serve just about any role you could ask of a folding knife. I think it's honestly that well made. Taking a look back here, you can see the stop pin is internal um, and it does ride with the, um, with the blade, meaning that you kind of have bra a bracing lug situation. Can you see it in there kind of moving? It's that bar that's kind of sitting up here. I wonder if I can, that bar that's sitting up there rides with the blade and then locks out here, which means it interacts with both sides of the scale. So you do have some sort of pressure mitigation when it's locked out, depending on what type of torque you're putting on the blade. That's not me saying, yeah, go ahead and you know torque around on it and pry with stuff, um, but I, I do like that additional bit of reinforcement. Obviously, uh, carbon fiber is not gonna be as tough as titanium, but as long as you don't do anything with this knife that you shouldn't be using a pocket knife for or a folding knife, then you're probably gonna be okay. I honestly can't find any other flaws with this knife. This is one of the most perfect folding knives I've ever seen. Oh, and by the way, yeah, there's your lockup at about 25%. Is it solid? Yeah, yep, absolutely, up, down, left, or right. Is it centered? It's absolute, I bet, honestly, I bet I could get under a microscope and find that this is like, <laughs> just like, as far as perfect could possibly go in the infinite measures of the universe, it's probably that close. This, this is an example of precision, um, knife making. And I have to imagine that this is, you know, in the mid tech category, given what these costs and what goes into them, you know, obviously there's some CNC work and there's some, you know, machine work, but there's, there's gotta be a lot of hand fitment and hand interaction and human interaction with this knife. Um, the least expensive I've ever seen this knife go for is about $550. I, I suppose that maybe there's variants that go all the way down to 500. Um, I've also seen this knife much more expensive. This variant that you're looking at here with the red carbon fiber is about 700. As far as what these knives go for in their standard form, um, which is all titanium and M390, uh, about $550 I think is well worth it. Well worth it. If you are considering crossing into the next level of the knife world, you're, you're considering going from really high-end production to, you know, like partially handcrafted mid-tech knife, um, it, you'll be hard pressed to find a better example than the Koenig Arius. In fact, I would venture to guess the Koenig Arius will ruin a lot of people's, you know, like their expectations on a custom level. I honestly, I've only handled one knife that feels as good as the Koenig Arius, and it was a $2,500 um, uh, bag knives Bugatti. That's the only other time I've seen such precision work and that smooth of action and that, you know, everything just seemed like so meticulously well done. Now, there were a lot more exotic finishes, a lot more exotic materials on that knife, which is most of what equated to the cost of it. But if you just want, if you're just wanting like a precision made, ultra fine tuned knife, where everything is perfect. You know, you get to that point where you're like, I want perfection. I wanna see what perfection looks like because I'm so picky. Nobody knows how picky I am. I'm the pickiest knife guy in the world. If you're the pickiest knife guy in the world and you demand perfection and you're ready to spend this kind of money on a knife, get a Koenig Arius. That's it. Get a Koenig Arius. It, it, it will, you will be satisfied with this knife. I can't, I can't find anything wrong with it. It's that good. Um, I, you know, everything, this is why I selected these knives out of Jeff's uh, collection. If you're wondering, like, every knife that you've showed this week has been, like, the best thing in the world, you know, like, is it, I think you're a little biased because this guy's being nice and he's letting you look at his knives. No, I picked these knives because I had a feeling that I was really going to like them, and I love nothing more than showing you guys knives that I love because it's real and I, I like giving that information. I don't like talking about knives that I don't like. It happens every now and then, but I, I don't like it. Um, so that's why, that's why everything this week has been so good. But truthfully, I mean, this is just, this is excellence. This, this is truly excellent. I know it's just been laying there. I haven't been talking about it. This is so smooth and it's just, it's almost like it doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel like it should be 
acting like this. You know, as far as like your brain determines a mechanism and, it, and its functionality and how it's how it should react, you know, you you could have handled a hundred knives that are honestly by today's standards very, very good and still not be ready for what this knife will throw at you when you fire it for the first time and then you feel that action. It is incredible. So um, as far as whether or not you want to spend six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars on a crazy version of this, that's up to you. But as far as the base version of this that I've seen, titanium for 550 bucks, yeah, I think it's worth every penny, honestly. This is going to go on my most recommended knives playlist. It's been an absolute joy to handle and play with. That is just about it. That's about all I can say about this knife. It's just amazing, and I'm so happy to have had an opportunity to take a look at it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was at least uh, entertaining. Um, if you did enjoy it, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.